Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. And I've got a new friend online and he's in the real estate world. I've talked a little bit about real estate because I'm, I'm invested in what's called REITs, but um, I haven't really done anything like what Greg is going to share with us. I haven't got into that kind of thing yet. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. How are you? How do you pronounce your last name? Is it? Uh, you, do you want to try it? It's pronounced young, like Y-O-U-N-G, but it's not spelled like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. I'll use young then. Young. Thank How's you. That? Young? <laughs> young? Hey, <Perfect>. whatever. <laughs> and where are you located? You're out in the warm country, aren't you? I am. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. So our weather is finally cooling down, but it's still in the 90s as we speak here in October. So Send some over. I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> we just got right. some. We just got Sunshine's some. on your way. Okay. How long you lived in Arizona? I've um, been in Arizona about 15 years now, so okay. uh, quite a long time. The deep roots, you understand. You got, you know the neighbors, right? Yeah, I know the neighborhoods. I know the neighborhoods pretty well, so I can say I'm a Phoenician at this point. But uh, originally from New York, but you know, I've been in Phoenix long enough to uh, know the lay of the land here. Phoenician? That sounds like something in Egypt. I know it sounds all fancy, right? It just means you're from Phoenix, or you know, you live in Phoenix, that kind of thing. But <laughs> rather than a phony, you're not a phony, right? Yeah, that doesn't go over too well, so I'd rather say permission. <laughs> Good. How long have you been doing the real estate world? Um, so I've been investing in real estate since 2012, and then I've been a, re a residential realtor since 2015. So combination, you know, eight years here, and then another five years uh, running at the same time. See, that's a good business to be in. I was, uh, my background's been more in the event industry, and I thought that was going to always be around, that people are always going to want to attend events and always want to be entertained. and I was in hospitality, travel, and tourism. I figured people would always want to travel. And then this thing came along called COVID. <laughs> and all of a sudden, er, it had me rethink. And I thought, what the heck? Yeah, it's been quite the disruptor, but it you know, kind of produces some other opportunities as well, like you're mentioning. So, mm -hmm. But real estate, um, I've always said that ever since you walked out of the cave, as soon as it rained, you had to go back in the cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that analogy. That's really cool. It's, it's uh, Maslow's hierarchy says you need security. So I think real estate's fairly secure, um, mm -hmm. commercial and residential. Do you do commercial stuff too? Um, mainly on the residential side at this point. Um, you know, I started in single family homes like most people do. Mm -hmm. um, I ventured out into some smaller multifamily. And uh, now what I'm doing, I'm actually raising money for bigger deals um, that you or I couldn't do on our own. But if we pull our money, money together, it's called syndication. Right. Um, you know, we can basically accomplish bigger and better things working together than just trying to go at it alone. You mean like maybe investing in a whole development, something like that, or a big apartment yeah. complex or something? So what me and my business partner do, um, we actually invest in residential assisted living houses. Okay. Um, and so it's, you know, it's, an, uh, it's a great industry to, to be in. Obviously, there's a lot of baby boomers that are, you know, turning... 65 every day. I think the number is 10,000 every day. So, um, and basically we just, um, we find the properties, we pair them up with uh, successful operators, put a lease together, raise the money. And then that's how our investors, um, you know, make their passive income. It's secured by the real estate, like you were mentioning. Um, and that's kind of our business plan. So, um, so we're still on the residential side. Commercial would probably be more of, hey, there's a $10 million multifamily building. Let's try to take that down. Um, that's probably going to be in my future, but for right now, um, we're doing somewhat smaller deals, uh, residential assisted living right around a million, two million, um, just to kind of get our feet wet and our mindset around the syndication process. It makes a lot of sense. It sounds like you got some savvy with your uh, strategy there because uh, the baby boomer thing, it makes sense to, to go into that market at this time. It seems like there's getting to be more and more that are... Mm -hmm. Like I'm 63, I might be doing one of those assisted living places someday <laughs> soon. Yeah, Maybe not. I, mean, I think we all will one day, right? So you're going to get into it either one way or another, and I'd rather be an investor in it, at least at my age anyway. So do you just work uh, on play, uh, uh, like local in your Phoenix area, or do you kind of pull these things together for any place in the country? So right now we're just looking at Phoenix just because um, Phoenix is a great market for it, a great demographic. Mm -hmm. um, so Phoenix is the place to be for residential assisted living and I just happen to be here and in the real estate world. So 
you know, that gives me access to be boots on the ground and really know what's going on in different neighborhoods and different areas. Um, so it just gives me, you know, that, that market knowledge and access. Well, that definitely makes some sense. I know I, <clears throat> I got a friend that lives out in California and he's in the desert. Uh, was it Borrego Springs out there and it's all hot and mm -hmm. it's kind of where you're at and that's where the retired people usually go. Or, uh, it is. Yeah. For some reason. So I'm not, I don't have that mindset yet of why they go there, but I'll be there one day. So. In fact, my, um, my sister, her husband just passed actually a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and she decided to pull up stakes and she was looking to go move out to Arizona. She said, I was surprised, but who knows, you might have a customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Appreciate that. Or a tenant, I guess it would be. But you're looking for more people that want to invest in these projects, right? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I'm looking to do at this point is just to connect with um, investors that want a good return on their money. Um, obviously, any investment does have some risk and there's no guarantees. But, um, you know, we feel this is a safe space to invest uh, based on the demographics. And um, even with the uncertainty of what's going on now with COVID and the election coming up, um, you know, we're still moving forward with these kind of investments just because this is our bread and butter and we feel really comfortable with it. Well, there's a big surge. I mean, a little off topic a little bit. There's a surge of all these people that are trying to make money using like trading Forex and all that kind of stuff. To me, that's risky. You don't know what that's like Las Vegas there. But real estate, it, it might do this, but it's going to go back up. I mean, it, that's I'm invested in REITs. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a good investment. Because it's, it's secure. It's, it's retirement homes, apartment complexes, storage lockers, vacation homes. I don't think that uh, that this type of investment, I'll speak for you because I know that you can't get it. I do a little disclaimer and stuff, but it seems to me that real estate is a much better investment than, say, 8-track tapes. <laughs> yes, 100%. I would agree with that statement. Um, but yeah, the reason I like real estate is because even before I pulled the trigger on a deal, I can pencil out all the numbers. So I actually know for the most part what money is coming back to me rather than like Forex or even the stock market. Um, I know I have friends and family that love the stock market, but you know, if you buy Apple today, tomorrow it can go down for any, you know, any number of reasons. Um, like you said, that's kind of going to Vegas and I love Vegas. It has a, you know, it's fun to gamble and everything, but when it comes to uh, your investments and your retirement account, um, I'd rather not gamble on that side of things and stick with real estate. It's, you know, it's what I know and it's been proven. The other thing I think is interesting about real estate is the mindset that people involved in real estate, they've got a little more of a long-term, almost a farmer type mindset that you plant the seed and it might be a while before it matures. So they got a longer mindset and real estate's a little higher ticket of, of a product. So it's a, it's a little safer, I think, to invest in because you got to put a lot of time and money and energy into the marketing of something. And then the payoff is more significant rather than, you know, selling a bunch of things at $20 a piece. Right. I mean, yeah. That's what I really like about it too, is like the barrier to entry is, um, you know, anybody can enter into real estate, but you really have to know what you're doing. And it does take some time. It's not just clicking on, you know, a stock and buying it and hoping it goes up. Um, and you said the key word there is mindset. Um, you know, in the past year, year and a half, I've really um, just dove into personal development and mindset. Um, just because in the beginning, I really thought I had it. And I was like, ah, I don't really need mindset. I can figure this out. I'm a smart guy. And you know, all those things. And then once I really dove into it, I was like, wow, there's so much that I don't know. And you know, looking back on it now, it just amazed me how ignorant I was to just jumping on the mindset and personal development bandwagon. So um, I read a lot of books and podcasts around mindset and personal development. Well, your general consumer is more of a, uh, here's the money, give me my stuff kind of, per, kind of mentality. So that's what they're in. They don't realize that here's the money. When can I move in? Well, it might be <laughs> six to 12 months. <laughs> right. Maybe some time. And then um, <clears throat> another thing that uh, you mentioned, it's good to work with someone that's been there, done that and understands it. Because I was, uh, there's a group up here called Minria. Minnesota Real Investors Association. Mm -hmm. And there was, I was talking with this woman and she thought she had it going on because she just bought this property. And then all of a sudden she realized that, oh, well, you got to put in new boilers and stuff and it needs a new roof and didn't see that. Well, there goes your profit. Yep. So you, uh, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts to it. A lot of behind the scenes that you really do have to uh, really do your due diligence on and kind of know kind of like we were talking about, there's those hidden things that 
um, you know, don't really show up until they do show up in real life. If it's not on your spreadsheet in real life, it'll catch up to you. So you do have to know those things. And what to look for. I mean, I bought a house uh, in the Western suburbs here and uh, they did reveal that they had a frozen um, a septic drain and then it cost the guy like seven grand to get it to have the city come out and fix it all. Well, I bought the house and they had an enclosure around this drain, but they didn't in insulate the enclosure. It was in the, mm -hmm. in the garage area. So it could have happened again, but they did cover it up. And uh, right. if, you, you know, if, you, if you're not poking around and looking at that stuff, you don't know it. So I, I think it's really important to have someone like yourself that's been there and knows what the heck to look for because otherwise you could your your big investment that you bought could be gone as soon as that new new roof has to put, be put on <laughs> yeah exactly you definitely have to partner up with people who know what they're doing have a track record you know been there and done that and you know and you like them and you trust them that's the main thing is um you know when it comes to investing in anything really so so we had talked earlier before we went live here but um I don't remember if you we talked about that this before that or if it's during the recording. So let's recap it. Um, it was you put together a pool of people so that you can do bigger projects. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. It's called, yeah, it's called syndication. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a. I've got a little phrase that I use all my stuff together. We accomplish more. It just yep, makes a yep. lot more sense to get a bunch of people together, and then you got different minds that can come together that know other people and. I'm, a, I'm big into the kind of collaboration kind of thing. It just makes a lot more sense than the competing kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. And that's really one thing I love about the real estate investing world is everybody has that abundant mindset where it's not, hey, I'm competing against you. If I get the property, you don't. It's more of how can we help each other out? And if you didn't get the property this time, you know, let's talk about, you know, what you did wrong or what, you know, what made your offer maybe not as appealing to the seller or, there's just a lot of collaboration in the real estate investing uh, community, which I absolutely love and I've never been a part of that. So it's, um, it's just a saving grace for real estate that, investing to me. That's anyway. also an element that uh, I had when in my background with the event industry events. So it's, a, it's a, like a wide vertical because there's mm -hmm. weddings, conventions, conferences, fairs, festivals, city celebrations, parties, concerts, there's a lot of stuff. And then with all those things, there's a lot of things that need to be like vendors like staging and lighting and portable restrooms and catering and flowers. There's so much stuff that's needed in that. Real estate is very similar because you got your, in, your insurance people and your broker and your hard money lenders and your banks and your uh, like contractors and you know, roofing doors, siding, landscaping, all that. So that's the same kind of thing. Like maybe you won this deal, but next time when I win a deal, we're going to use your contractors and that's going to help you. And right. one big happy family. It is. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. So yeah, it's great. Very cool. Well, I like to keep these kind of condensed so people can digest the information and then get right to it. So how do they get a hold of you in case they wanted to get involved with this thing called real estate investing? Great. So the best way is to email me. Um, my email is greg at sevenfigurecapital.com, all spelled out. And the website is the same, sevenfigurecapital.com, um, all spelled out as well. So um, yeah, that'll be the best way for anybody to get a hold of me. And I really appreciate that. Sevenfigurecapital.com. I will put that in the uh, YouTube links too and make them clickable. Oh, thank you so much. Absolutely. So if you want to stay on, I'm going to sign this one off and beam it up to the universe. I appreciate you taking the time, Greg, in sunny Arizona. I'm up here in chilly Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I'm a really fan, really big fan of the show. And um, yeah, just thank you again for having me. It's, it's been a lot of fun. I'm glad I'm doing this kind of stuff with the COVID stuff. We're all locked down, but we still get to meet new people. And who knows? Maybe I'll come and visit you when I get cold. Hey, come on by. You got my name and number and email, so... Okay, Greg. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one.